You should watch first and third because of your commitment to excellence. Drunken debauchery. Athletic achievement. PBR. Competition. Women. Money. You ready? Let's go. Shocker. Today on the show, we have Kevin Carter, a.k.a. Meatball Kevin. Kevin is co-captain and master strategist of Fort Lauderdale's Meatballs, uh, the most successful and storied uh, kickball team playing today. Welcome, Kevin. Thanks for coming on. What's up, man? What's up? Guys, how's it going? Thanks for having me. Yeah, man. So okay. let's, let's start out with uh, how you got started in kickball, man. How, uh, how'd you get into it? Uh, you know, where'd the meatballs come from? Uh, I mean, it pretty much started as a... Work team, a bunch of coworkers playing, getting drunk on a Friday night, playing some uh, whack of kickball, and you know Matt and I took it from there to the next level. It's pretty much how it all got started. About two thousand and six. Very cool. Nice. Cool. Familiar so, tale. Yeah, I know about it. I, and you guys started as um, Montezuma's Revenge on the tournament circuit. Am I right? Or something like that. It, that was that was our first uh, tournament we played in. I think, what was that, in Miami? Miami, yeah, we were there. Yeah, yeah you guys had the good uni- those nice uniforms. <laughs> Dude, they were terrible, man. They were like, like <laughs> on or something. They, like, the sweat would just like collect on the inside. And, like, those are awful. <laughs> but yeah, that, that was our first tournament. I think that was uh, winter. That might have been January or February in, what, 2008? 2008, And yeah. then Vegas. Vegas 2008 that was the first tournament as the meatballs like where we got the whole team to go to a tournament and uh playing so that's where it pretty much got started that year so you guys have won a lot of big events at this point um <laughs> just a it, couple yeah just a couple of them is it less exciting now than it was early on when you were first winning your first tournament um less exciting definitely not I mean I mean, it's harder. It's harder to win a tournament. Than, like, we have a target on our back right now. You know, we're, we're going into tournaments expected to win the tournament. So, I mean, we got to get it done. And when you do get it done, it's definitely not less exciting. It it's definitely feels good to, you know, get what you got, get what, what needed to be done, done, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah. we've had a lot of... Um, we didn't just show up out of nowhere and start winning tournaments. I mean, we lost a lot of tournaments before we started winning tournaments. So, I mean, there's been a long road we've been on for a while. So, I don't think it will ever get – when. How I don't know how winning can ever get old, you know. It's not going to get old. <laughs> hey, I hear you, man. So, you know, we uh, – as you know and as we all know, we've been doing most of our competitive kickball uh, in the circuit. Um how has the circuit changed kickball for you guys? And, uh, and similarly, how is, uh, you know, tell us a little bit about ultra kickball in, uh, in Fort Lauderdale. But let's start with the circuit. Uh, how's that changed things for you guys? Well, um, you know, playing for money is always good. It's always a way to get people to go away for the weekend and uh, say, hey, you want to come away and play some kickball and probably get a couple hundred bucks out of it. So, you know, th- that's why the circuit's good. As far as the rules with the circuit, I mean, that definitely changed the game big time from what, how we learned to play the game in WACA. Um, you know, you need to have good outfielders now. It's a kicking game. It's a totally different game now. And uh, as far as how did it change my team, we needed to put – I mean, everyone's got to be able to do everything now. You can't just be a bunter. You just can't be a kicker. you got to be able to bunt. you got to be able to kick. You have to be able to – track a ball down in the outfield and catch it, which in the past, man, in the past you could talk to some of your outfielders. They might have caught a ball once all season. Now you're catching <laughs> yeah. balls all game, you know? Yeah. So it's definitely, a, it's definitely a different game. You need, you need to have complete players on your team that can do it all. You know, an outfielder is, a, is just as important as the third baseman nowadays, you know? Yeah. Yeah, agreed. As you were creating this monster of the meatballs, did you guys have any core philosophy that you follow to make this team? Um, you know, we're, 
we're probably one of the few left that actually does it, but we still go on the bunt, bunt, stack, kick strategy. I mean, our strategy is no secret. You know, we're going on a strategy that's been around for years. And I believe that if it's executed, it's, it's the most efficient strategy out there. Bunt, bunt, sack, bunt, kick, you know, get your runs, play some defense. And you guys are and, stacking. And, you know, like... you look for people that. No, go ahead. Sorry. And basically what I was saying is you just look for people that could do all that. I mean, it, if they're up in the lineup and we need them to bunt, we need them to kick, we need them to sack. If you have players that can do all three of those, I think um, our game plan will work out pretty well and we'll keep getting these trophies at the end of tournaments. I hear that. I was going to ask you guys, uh, kicking lineups have come up in recent days uh, after the Georgia kickball open. We had a lot of feedback from folks like Tropics Kickball who are – uh, used to guy girl guy girl in their lineup, and a lot of teams have been going guy 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 girl or guy guy girl. Uh, but you guys pretty much are stacking, you know, all your guys in a row, right? Um, I mean, it really depends on who we got coming and what our game plan going into that tournament is. Like every tournament's different. It's really based on who who's coming, really. Um, what happened with Georgia is, you know, we had, we knew who was on our list, who was going to make the trip. Um, we watched some video. I watched live at, of, uh, Virginia beach of you guys all playing. Thanks for watching. And I mean, I saw, I mean, some changes, you know, that's why I, I wasn't just watching to watch kickball. I was watching to see what was going on out there. And, uh, Matt and I noticed some changes with lineups going on out there. So, I mean, we had to adjust ours. So last lineup we, we went, um, 12 straight guys, four straight girls back to the top. Um, something we never done before, and we might actually do it again. I don't know. But um, it all depends. It really all depends who's coming and what the other team is doing. But, um, you know, I believe it, the, the whole – it doesn't matter. I mean, there's some girls on our team that are way better than other guys anyway. So it doesn't really matter if they're female or male to me. It just cool. works out how it does, you know. Yeah. Amen. So, listen, uh, from one captain to another, I know sometimes in this, you know, kickball game, to be successful, you got to make some tough decisions. Uh, it's not an easy thing to be in charge. And, and sometimes, uh, you know, people's feelings get hurt. <laughs> Tell me – Man, what's the toughest cut you ever had to make? We can bleep out names if you want. <laughs> uh, oh, God. You know, there's been a lot. I, think you I know, I can see your face. There's one in particular you're thinking of, man. I think we've all been through that uh, time where it's like, ah. There's been a lot. And, I'm, you know, I, I don't even know. Uh, well, how to go here? You can take the fit. I mean, <laughs> well, I guess tell me then. You know, like how do, yeah. you, how do you guys go about it? Like when you have a player that's maybe you know o over the course of traveling and competing together, has become a friend, but they they just they just can't get it done for whatever reason, or you or you brought in someone new who plays their position much better than they do, and maybe they're not contributing on offense. Uh, you know, how do you how do you go about? Um, you know, just. As a piece of advice to, to other captains out there who are struggling with this issue, like how do you go about letting someone know, you know, hey, no hard feelings, but it's not working out anymore? I mean, well, basically, we run our team from, um, we're, you know, after Las Vegas, no one's guaranteed a spot on the team. We rebuilt from October to December, and that's when people are asked if they're going to be on the team or not be on the team. So, People get, understand like that's how we run it and that's what we do. As yeah. far as someone not being asked back, um, I, either Matt take handles it or I can handle it. One of us will take it and just talk to him, and hopefully it's no hard feelings and we just move on. You know, we'll still be friends if we see each other. But so it, I don't know. You know, it's hard. It's hard to. It's it is just kickball, but. I mean, we're traveling. We're trying to win tournaments. You need the best on your team, you know. If That's someone's true. not, uh, it's not, someone's not pulling their weight, you got to move on. So, so I think everyone kind of understands it. Your your philosophy pretty much is start clean slate after every tournament and ask people back, and kind of everyone's kind of sitting by the phone waiting to get the call, kind of deal. <laughs> well, put it this way: no one, uh, 
as of um, what what day is the Circuit Cup? October 9th? Yeah, October 9th. October, on October 10th, the meatball roster has zero people on it, and we wow. start all over again. So, I mean, that's pretty much how it goes, up, Wait, goes so every year. Wait, who's the captain? Damn What's Don't that? <laughs> Don't worry about it. <laughs> so, um, what are the most crucial components to the meatball success as of late? What are you guys doing that maybe these other teams aren't doing that makes you so consistent? Uh, I think it's our depth. I think, um, I think like on the offensive side, our six through 11 part of the batting order may be better than some teams one through five. I think we're real deep. We don't give, uh, we don't give the other team a break on defense. We're bringing it to you the whole game. You know, you're not going to have any breaks. You're always going to have to make a tough out on us. And then offensively for tournaments, I mean, we're going into final fours and uh, elite eights, and we got pitchers with not a pitch on their arm yet or third basemen that haven't made a charge yet, and they're fresh and they're ready to go. So basically it's depth. You have to have depth. You have to have a bunch of people that are – unselfish and that know that if they're playing in the morning and not playing the afternoon, they're helping your team, you know, by playing in the morning and giving the other guys a rest. That's part of, you know, helping your team by playing, by sitting in the afternoon and having the guys get the work done in the afternoon. That's, it's all a team thing. There's not no such thing as one third baseman, one lead off, one pitcher. It's just a whole core going into it. I might have got away with it there, guys. I'm just no, like good. days and all. <laughs> yeah, no, that's great. But, uh, so, Kevin. But, uh, oh, I'm sorry. Continue. No, go ahead. I don't even remember what the question was. <laughs> I was gonna say. I was gonna say. So, I mean, you, you got a lot of you got a lot of star power on your team. A lot of uh, names that everyone's heard. Uh, you know, a lot of lot of big shots. But who would you say is the most underrated player on your team? Who's the, who's the guy that that that, that or or girl that that uh, produces the most that that people don't talk about? Wow. Um, <laughs> I you think can more than one. Friend, if, uh, you know, if a couple come to mind, it's 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 tough. I, it's tough. Like offensively, I would say the most underrated player is probably Corey Holland, who's one of our pitchers. You know, I'll know Corey. <laughs> he, he pitched bats, in uh, Georgia, um, uh, JKO, GKO. Yeah, he. I mean, he bats like eight, nine, sometimes even ten in our batting order, and he's just the last two tournaments he's had the best overall batting average uh, of the day, batting in the, in the eight nine spot. You know, you don't have that happen a lot on other teams. And, you know, that's what really helps us out, you know, push the order at the bottom there, threaten in the second inning, third inning. He's definitely underrated offensively. Defensively, you all know he's, like, one of the best pitchers, if not the best pitcher. Yeah. We've, we've but, got some um, footage from uh, the Georgia kickball open we'll run at the end of this podcast. Uh, he was throwing heat. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll get to that a little later. Yeah, yeah really. Well, I haven't good. seen any footage from Georgia yet. Um, what would you say some advice to give the captains to build a successful team for the new circuit? Um, well, for building a team, you really gotta, excuse me, guys, you really gotta have a, <laughs> have a number. Like our number is like, we're going to have, we, we base it off a, let's find 12 to 14 guys. Let's find six to eight girls, let's talk to them in November, December, and say this is our goal. We're going to travel to – we're going to play in our home event, SFKO. We're going to travel to D.C. We're going to travel to Vegas. We're going to travel to one more. Can you, we get commitment out of you? Can you do it? And if they say yes, go on, move from there. If they can't do it or can only make one, we're not going to take them. There's no point to just take have someone on our team that's going to make one tournament. We want to make sure they're committed from day one be- that they're going to make events because we don't want to have to call around asking people a week before to you know if you, if they could come with you because you're a girl short or a guy short or whatever. So I mean that's where we get started. We find that after we find that we just lay down the law like look this is how our team runs. Um, you pretty much earn your spot if you're the best third baseman. You're going to you know be over at the hot corner in the championship game. If you're the best guy, Bunton, you're going to be leading off. 
you know, you pretty much earn your spot with our team. The batting order kind of writes itself based on performance. And um, you really got to build a team that is unselfish, like, and no drama. Drama is the worst. <laughs> you cannot have drama. You, can, you cannot have people that um, are coming up to you complaining again about they think they should be batting in a different spot. They think they think they should get more innings, this and that, sitting on the sideline, you know, pouting. Like, you don't need that. You need people that understand, like, if they're not in the game, they did that to themselves that they're not in the game, and they're going to be over there with a smile on their face, cheering on their teammates and, you know, trying to get this day complete. And, uh, I mean, that's what you need. Drama is like the – Drama kills teams. That's like the worst thing for a team, you know? Yeah. I'm sure you guys all have had that at some point yeah. in your career. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like, you definitely don't need that. We're from like, New York, I mean, dude. You know, <laughs> We've got to have too. <laughs> but, um, you know, this is probably the first time ever. So, say we hit the tournament scene in 08. So, first time in three years. This is probably the first time we've had a, a team how we wanted to have it. Um, you know, we call it drama-free kickball. You know, if you're going to bring the drama, just turn around and go home. We don't need you here, you know. I don't care who it is. It doesn't matter. I don't want to hear it. So that's the best way to build your team. And if you get a team that people that like each other and can start playing together, everything's going to fall into place for you. Cool. Uh -huh. So, Kevin, you guys are taking some heat on the message board for uh, snatching up all the best players in South Florida. Uh, maybe to the detriment of some other teams around there. How do you, how do you respond to that? Ah, uh, you know that's what the message board's all about, man. You know, I <laughs> <laughs> I do the same stuff to everyone else on there. Um, <laughs> I mean, that's the game. It's not like we we do or have done anything that no one else has done. You know, it, it's it's just it's just how the game is, and it's mostly just. Uh, Mr. Trey going at it there, acting like we're like ruining South Florida kickball, but when in fact it's South Florida kickball may be at its strongest right now if we can get some of these teams on the road, you know? You got Waco Elite, you got Ultra, you guys are growing. It's great. Yeah. I'm looking yeah, forward it's, to that. it's real, real strong right now. We got some teams out there that um, they haven't hit the tourney scene yet. I don't know if they ever will. I mean, I'm sure you'll see them in our local South Florida tournament, but, uh, these guys can play. Like, if we had an 8.30 game on Thursday. I showed up around 7.45, got there a little early while the, the first games were going on, and I was totally impressed by team what I was seeing out there. People just kicking line draw. It was amazing, just totally different than what I've seen in the past. Anyone can pretty be, much be anybody nowadays, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. We just played fully loaded. We just played fully loaded on Thursday, and our game was 10-6. to 6. That's a I mean, great score. I've never even heard. I've never even heard of a score like that. I've never even been part of that before, you know? <laughs> so it's definitely, things are changing. It's The game's changing, and uh, it's it's always fun, you know? It never gets boring. I hear that, man. So sure. how would you describe your rivalry with Panic Attack? Is it a rivalry for you? I mean, absolutely it is. <laughs> um, Greatest rivalry you know, in no, football, I'd say. Yeah, it's pretty good. It definitely it, it's def it definitely is. I mean, I th I think there's only one team out there that could can beat us, and that is them. Um, having said that, I, I don't think we've given them a game yet. I feel like every game we've played them, we have played like absolute crap, including the game that we won in Fort Lauderdale. Like I, we played bad, they played bad. Uh, we've yet to see a a good good battle. We you may, we might have seen a little bit of that in New York when we were battling out, but we all know what happened there. You know, ran out of some time. But um, it's it's definitely good, and it's I think it's going to be interesting. We won one this year. They won one. Just playing the odds, you know, we could meet up in D.C. in a month Probably. against each other. And then we could go into Vegas and possibly even meet up twice if we both decide to play uh, all weekend there. So it could be end up being a five game series here. So we'll see. But it's fun, you know. I wish I could. Uh, I wish we could go somewhere and just play them 
at eight <laughs> in the morning and, and play them every hour. You know, it's definitely a lot of fun. Very cool. Right well, listen, man. Uh, I, I mean, as, as we saw uh, on the Ustream, they, they got the better of you at the Georgia Kickball Open. Um, any insights on that game? What happened there? Um, interesting game. So calm. You know, uh, there's times that we lose and we're just not getting base runners on or we're just not kicking them in. This was actually like the total opposite. Um, quick rundown offensively. We go first inning, our first two batters get on. Um, we don't move them over properly. We get one run. I believe we left some out there right away in the first inning. Mm-hmm. We go on the second it we go into the second inning. First two runner first two batters get on. It's first and second, no outs. Couldn't ask for a better situation playing against a team like Panic in a final. Like our offense is clicking. Um, don't move them over properly. We walk out of the second inning with zero runs. Like just to have runners on first and second with no outs and walk away with no runs kind of just crushes you there. Um, we go into the third inning. We got five left to our top. Our girls come through huge, kicking away, getting on. Uh, Jamie had a big kick. Kristen had a big kick. We went through the bottom of our lineup so that MJ, our leadoff, was leading off the fourth inning. We set ourselves up for success again and then failed. So we did so many things right, but just did the little things wrong that are really overlooked in kickball. Like I mentioned it on the board this week, like people always talk about um, who got on and who scored or who kicked someone in, but they always forget about like the guy that made it, might, might have just uh, put down a sack bunt. Mm-hmm. That sack, that sack bunt is the reason that guy scored or that guy had an opportunity to kick someone in. And that's just didn't, we just didn't do it. We just didn't get that little thing done that needed to be done, which, which hurt us all offensively. That, it was just weird. It was just a weird game. I couldn't believe what I was seeing. Like There were so many things we did right that you need to do against a, a team like Panic. And then we did just little things wrong to kill it. Um, defensively, uh, it's kind of a blur to me, you know, like pretty much everyone's talking about this home run. Um, the guy just kicked the bomb. I don't think our outfielder was out of position. There's nothing we could have done. There's nothing we could have done there. Like, I don't think Warley was playing shallow. It, we had him where we wanted to have him. He got beat deep. It, it cost us two runs and you know what? We only scored one anyway. So whatever else happened in the game didn't really matter at that point. Yeah, so some teams might get demoralized after a tough loss like that, but how are the meatballs going to respond? Good question. Uh, they are fired up, I'll tell you that much. <laughs> it's actually it's actually hard to even calm them down at this point. I'm just let them, letting them run free a little bit here, doing <laughs> what they got to do, and uh, – you know, take out their frustration on whatever they want to take it out on. And in about a week, I'll gather them back up and uh, start working on, uh, you know, start working on D.C. But, you know, I kind of want to – yeah, they're they're definitely fired up. I could see it in their eyes. I could see it in their text messages they're sending me. I mean, everyone's fired up, and uh, it was definitely a good wake-up call. I mean – we played that morning, maybe that might have, I've never seen the meatballs play that good in the morning. Usually we come out flat, we have some rough pool play games, we start waking ourselves up, and then we progressively get better. They came out sharp right off the bat, started playing good, and it was actually the opposite of, as usual, like, we went into lunch break, and we just never woke up after lunch break. We all took little naps, and we just never snapped out of our naps. We know it's like... Everyone almost wanted to be sitting under the tent in the shade that day, you know, in the afternoon. They never came out to play. So um, it was a good wake-up call. I don't think you'll see that happen again. Good. Well, we're definitely looking forward to you guys at the D.C. tournament on uh, July 16th. It'll be a lot of fun. Amen, man. Everybody wants a piece. Yeah. <laughs> Go definitely, the trophy. That's, def- that's definitely by far. Obviously, we love South Florida. It's our home tournament. But by far, as um, – DC is always our favorite tournament on the circuit. We love it. That, we're, we, were, we were going back there no matter what. You know, we already knew 
DC was on um, our schedule for this year, and we're really looking forward to it. Well, good to hear. Nice. Uh, we, I don't have the. This is uh, actually the uh, Circuit Cup trophy. I don't have the DC trophy uh, at the moment, uh, but we'll, we'll we'll show this guy in a few minutes. I just got the DC trophy in the mail like three weeks ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's like three months ago. The, the, the little yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're we're getting an upgrade this year for, for the DC trophy, and it's not going to be as small as the Virginia Beach trophy, <laughs> or excuse me, the Georgia trophy. That thing was tiny. Yeah, I saw that. I saw that. The DC trophy is kind of cool, though. It's got some history to it, you know. Yeah. Back in uh, two years two years ago, when Mr. Beans <laughs> pissed in it at <laughs> at the bar. <bottom. laughs> we won't it. We won't go there. <laughs> we. we <laughs> Which is why we're upgrading the trophy. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I forgot about that. Yeah, good times. Well, good man. It was good talking to you. Hey, listen, Kevin. Thanks a lot, man. That was uh, that was awesome. Um, this is uh, this is a much watched episode. So, uh, really appreciate your coming by, man. Great job. Awesome, dude. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, definitely, guys. definitely. I'm I'm down for this whenever, man. You know, let me know. I'm I'm ready to go. Outstanding. We'll do it again then. Kickballers and kickballerettes, this is the circuit we're talking about. It's not your daddy's country club. We are the competitive home for kickball in America. You've heard us talk about it. Kickball 365 produces the circuit, a collection of top flight competitive kickball tournaments and events where you can win money and prizes. You ready? Think your team can compete? Register today at thisiskickball.com. Go on and on and on and go take them to the crib and let's the bone in. Easy, call them on the phone and come The circuit is the only national professional tour of top flight competitive kickball tournaments in America. Any circuit team can register for the Circuit Cup Championship and compete to win over twenty thousand dollars in cash prizes. Think your team can compete? Register at the URL below. Speaking of, That's I so heard bad. uh you have something to show us, Admin. Yeah, guys. Uh, I wanted to introduce uh, the Circuit Cup Championship trophy. Let me get back so you can see it. Uh, pretty heavy, pretty quality. Wow. Look at that stuff. thing. That's money. What a teabag. Uh, so uh, this will be awarded to the champion team uh, at the Circuit Cup Championship on October 9th. Uh, nice. Not only will you win this, uh, it is a traveling trophy. So hopefully it'll make it'll survive the year traveling with the team that wins this. Um, but we're also going to give $10,000 to first place. Uh, second place is going to take home $2,500. Uh, the semifinalists are both going to take home $1,250. And then the quarterfinalists both take home $625 each. So if you're a team that's already competed in one of our seven circuit events for the year, you can register today for $500 and have a chance to win you know, the top eight seeds and this cup uh, trophy. So check it out. URLs below. See you in uh, Vegas. Come get some. Thank you for watching me do what I love to do, guys, because I know I love you.